Welcome to the YouTube channel for Bible Biker Church in Rockwood, Tennessee. I am Fred Marshall, Elder and Associate Pastor. We pray that what you're about to see is inspiring to you as it is the truth in the Word of God as it is written. We pray that it blesses you and anyone that you share it with. If you like what you see, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also know that you can find us on Facebook under the page name Bible Biker Church. Thanks and have a blessed day. All right, well, good evening and welcome back to Tubbs, the Throttle Up Biker Bible Study. Glad you guys are here. Brave the cold and the snow. Yes, it is flurries out there. Yeah. Just a little bit. Oh, Just a little bit. See? Not to mess with us. <laughs> and yeah, for those of you watching out there, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, thank you for the time, taking time out of your life to watch the message that uh, we give here, either on Thursday nights or on Sundays. Brother Will. Um, if you've not, well, you guys have been here before, but if you've never watched us out there, let me uh, let me give you a quick rundown of what goes on here. We walk through the Bible, of which there's 66 books, right? There's 39 in what's called the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. And I get this question a lot of, you know, what does that mean, Old Testament and New Testament? Well, it's, it's actually just like, um, like our calendar. What happened before Christ, B.C., is the Old Testament. And what happened after Christ, or Anno Dominion, is after. That's the New Testament. Now, that's not what those mean, but that's what it's about. The Old Testament is about Moses' law and how God dealt with people in the past. And the New Testament is about the New Covenant, or that of Christ. But regardless of where you look, all 66 books point to one event. That event is the cross, where Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, yeah. hung and died for us, was buried, rose after three days, walked around with people, continued his teaching, then ascended into heaven. Why did he do all of that? To show us how to have a relationship with God. That's what it's all about. So the, the disciples that the disciples are the ones that followed Jesus from the beginning, and the apostles are the ones that Jesus sent, of which Paul was. Now again, Paul, we think, is the writer of Hebrews, and since we're in the book of Hebrews tonight, I'll bring that up. But Paul used to persecute Christians. He used to kill them. Yes, he, did. he was known as Saul at that point in his life. But he had an encounter with Jesus on the road. And found out that he was in the wrong. Then he become, become or became. Then he became one of the biggest proponents of, or for in this case, Jesus. So think about that in your life. Where were you before Christ? Yes. And where are you now that you know Christ? Amen. Because it there should be a huge difference in you. Amen. How you think, how you feel, how you love. That's just something to think about. So, now I said all of that because I want I wanted to know what we're doing here. Um, I teach out of the English Standard Version of the Bible. People get on me about that. It's, if it's not King James, it's not any good. Well, that's not true. It's not true. Now, I refer back to King James quite often because it may say something a little different or have a better structure of words, but for those people who say it's King James only, you're way out in left field. That means you're trying to put the Holy Spirit in a box and you're saying that God can't reach people with the ESV or the NIV or the NASB. Yes, David? There's a study called Harmonutics. And it is taking something from one culture and applying it or understanding it in another. Right. If you were to get a dictionary today and look up the word fear, it means you expect corporal punishment, uh, bad things are going to happen to you. And yet the Bible says fear God. If you go back to that time when there was when the Bible was written. When you fear, that means have a reverence for something far above anything else. It is the most important thing. It's fear of God. It has nothing to do with what 
you read today when it says fear God. Right. And that's King James. This is one of the reasons why you need other Bibles to understand what's right. So I, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. I just want you to know that that's what we do and that's why. It's easier for me to teach out of the ESV because it's easier to read. But the meaning of the words, again, back to King James, or better yet, back to the Hebrew and the Greek when it's necessary. Now, we also don't stand on any rituals here. There's an... I think the word is eclectic group of denominations represented. It's, it's wide ranging. And there are going to be differences in what we believe after the cross. And that's okay. Because we check all of that at the door. And we only read what the word says. We don't listen to any other books. We don't listen to any other person. We just go by the Bible. Yeah. And then I, I, I read dozens of commentaries just so that my mind is right I read different sides of everything but what is said here is just what's in the Bible okay leaving anything associated with denominations at the door is uh, a way that we can say there's no condemnation here yep. and I know that's one of brother Gene's favorite verses and Paul says in Romans 8, 1, it says, For now there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So that's, that's the whole thing. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. As long as we've accepted Him and given our lives to Him. So all of this other stuff, you have to do this, you have to do that, or you have to dress this way, or you can't have tattoos. No. Yeah, that's right. Now, there is things that we shouldn't do once we become Christians, but the Spirit of God that lives inside of each of us will guide us through those things. Amen? Amen. See, you can come here as you are, regardless of your past, your looks, your beliefs. Watch over the Internet. It's just the way you are. It doesn't matter. Because I don't care. Now, I'm going to say this, and I don't mean to be looking down. I don't care about your past. And I don't mean that in any way other than this. I do care about your future. I care whether or not you are going to spend eternity in heaven more than I care what you may have done prior to Jesus. Amen. Okay? Everybody got that? Everybody okay with that? And here's why. Either in heaven with Him or in hell with the one who thinks He will rule the world is where you're going to spend eternity. That's right. That's only two choices. And it's your choice. Spend it in heaven with God by giving your life to Jesus or spend it in hell with he who thinks he rules the world. See, greater is he that is in you than he that rules the world. A lot of people don't understand what that means. That's the Spirit of God that lives inside you is greater than anything that Satan can throw at you. He throws all kinds of stuff at each of us. All the time. All the time. So come and listen. And let's see what the writer of Hebrews, again, we, we think it's Paul, is talking about in chapter 11. That's where we are. We're going to start about verse 7 here in a minute. But first, a word from our sponsors. Oh, oh wait. Uh -oh. We don't have sponsors. <laughs> and that's okay. I, 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 I just, regardless, here's some information that you will need. How about that? Next Thursday is what in the U.S.? Turkey Day. It's Thanksgiving. Please take time to give thanks to God for being alive, Amen. for being healthy, for being wherever you are. Because remember, if you look at uh, 2 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul says, Paul says, Give thanks to God in all circumstances, for that is the will of Christ that is within you. 
It doesn't matter if you're in a good place or what you think of as a bad place. Give thanks to God because you're still moving. Right? Yeah. So here we will have a potluck. <clears throat> we'll still have a little gathering kind of thing. We'll um, bring a dish to share and we'll just see what, what goes on from there. Okay? Now, that's next Thursday. The following Sunday, so that will be the 25th, I believe it is, we will be having a special group here on Sunday morning. That will be the Teen Challenge group from Knoxville. Um, they're coming to do uh, um, gospel singings, just like you saw it last Sunday, a different group, but the same company, Teen Challenge, up in Crossville, was it? Yeah, it was in Crossville. Yeah, how'd that go? Oh, man. Aren't they awesome? Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Anyway, so next, so that, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, that'll be the Sunday after Thanksgiving, we'll have the special group teen challenge here. They're going to take over the service the whole day. Afterwards, we will be having a little dinner, a little appreciation dinner for them. And that'll also be one of the few times that we actually ask for a love offering. Has nothing to do with offering or anything that you give to support this ministry. This will be for them. So if you would like to give anything to them, back there on the table is um, little little envelopes to, to put money in. Just write on there for Teen Challenge and drop it in the spiritual ammunition box. We just give it all to them, um, whatever's going to be there. So anyway. After the service, after the potluck, I'm looking for any able bodies to help my daughter pack a U-Haul truck. So that'll be Sunday the 25th after the dinner. If anybody's available, my daughter's moving to North Carolina. So I just need, she's got a few pieces of furniture I can't lift. Um, so I'm mostly speaking, that obviously, after the internet and then a few boxes. So anyway. To North Carolina, to Raleigh, North Carolina. Oh, that's where? that's that's for here. here. She lives over in the meadows. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's not too far from the park. Yeah. Right. Good weather. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, I think that's all the ones I have for today. Thank you in advance for um, being here next Thursday and then the next Sunday. I really appreciate it if you're available. But let me pray and open this up um, to hear the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you again for this place that we can sit and we can talk openly and honestly about you. Father God, we love you. And we just thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and what Amen. he did for us. And Jesus, we thank you for being obedient and showing us the way that we should live our lives and how we should be obedient. <laughs> And how we have a relationship with the Father through you. Father, I thank you for those that are here. I thank you for those that are watching out over the internet. Father, just come and be with us now and help us understand what these words that were written down so long ago are to mean to us now as they meant to those then. Father, again, we just thank you for everything you're doing to us, through us, and for us in this place. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. amen. So last week... We started in chapter 11 after spending, you know, like 27 years in uh, <laughs> chapter 10, it seemed like. But the first six verses were so deep, we didn't get very far. I mean, it, just, it was just a lot of information. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to try to point out is it looks like the writing style changed between <laughs> chapter 10 and chapter 11. And that's, again, why we think it's Paul that wrote this. And he wrote it at two different times. When he was first converted, writing to his family and friends, the Hebrews. And then after he had been out on a couple of missionary journeys, sitting in prison probably somewhere, don't know, wrote the last two or three chapters. Because the writing style kind of changes. It went from, hey, look, this is what was supposed to happen and it did. Hey, look, this is... What we knew was going to happen, remember, 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 to, oh, hey, by the way, this is what happened and here's why. It's almost like reminding people of a history lesson 
versus giving people a history lesson. And you'll understand that more as we go through starting in verse 7. But it just, to me, it feels like the writing style changes right there. When you read in Timothy where Paul sends him to get the scrolls and the parchment, we think that that parchment may be the first 10, 11 chapters of Hebrews. Again, there's nothing that supports that. It's just a theory. I like the way Dave says that. It's just a theory. It's not a teaching. It's just a theory. So I, I agree with that. I agree with that. So anyway, so it's now more of a, this is what happened in the past, reminder but uh, listen to us now as we get into this and see if it looks like it has changed to you. So, you're ready. Uh, how long has it been since you've sat in history class? <laughs> well, here's, here comes one. So, verse 7. So this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7. It says, by faith. Now, we spent a lot of time last week talking about that word faith. Right? You can't, you can't do anything without faith, right? You can't go get in your car and take off to go home unless you have faith that's going to start. Now, that's the simplest type of faith. But the faith that we're talking about here is what is in, the faith in what is not seen. As a matter of fact, that's what one of the verses said last week. It is by that faith in what is not seen that is greater than faith faith of what is seen. Because who wants to have faith in something that is seen? Well, I know that to be true because I can see it. I, think I can't see God. I can see what He's done. And we talked about those that still want to believe that evolution happened. No. No. You, you can't prove that. You have to go by faith. And you have faith in something that didn't exist, and we have some faith in something that did exist before. Because, first three words in the Old Testament and the New Testament is, in the beginning. That means God was there before the beginning. And I love the way the New Testament says, in the beginning was the Word. And that Word is capitalized, because that's a representation of Jesus. So, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word uh, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it's not was a God. Sorry to the religion that teaches He was a God. No, He was God. He is God. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. Amen? Amen. So, by faith, Noah. Now, who's Noah? He's a sailor. <laughs> he was a sailor before there were... Oceans to sail on. Now, here's the cool thing. Here's the cool thing about Noah. Noah was a nobody. But he had faith. See, people have this argument all the time. They said, well, God, I can't be a preacher because God didn't call me to that. That's not the right way to put it. That's not... Strike that. Erase that. Let me try that again. I am not like those preachers. I can't do that. I wasn't born with that. No, no, no. That's not true. God will equip you to do what He wants you to do. Not what you want to do. Not what you want somebody else to do, but what God has intended for them to do. So, by faith, Noah, being warned by God. A little personal conversation. Concerning events as yet unseen and reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of the household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by FedEx. <laughs> no, comes by faith, right? Comes by faith. Okay, so the writer here is, is telling you the story that is in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis, the first book of the Bible. 
In the beginning, God created. Man came on day six. God rested on day seven. Fast forward. That's what, that's what that sound is. Fast forward. But, uh, chapter six. And the world had become evil. Yes. And God wanted to destroy all of it, start over. But Noah, by faith, was chosen. Noah and his wife, their three sons and their three wives, and two of every animal. What? Uh-oh. Okay. Have it. Time out. I forget this every week. My battery's about to die. Every week. Forget this charger. So Noah was an ordinary person. Noah was an ordinary man that had faith in God. Something he encountered or something. Or was he born with that? No, no, no. No, no. That's, that's the difference in what is seen and what is unseen. He hadn't seen anything that we know of. That we know of. But evil world back then. Right. But he knew enough by faith to know that God had chosen him. I apologize, my friends. One of these days I'll have it all together and actually know what I'm doing. Nah. <laughs> we like it this way. <laughs> but I can, well, there you go. There, there. Now, I'm not comparing myself to Noah, but God gave me the ability to do technical stuff. That's why we have words on the screen and computers that run things and music on Sundays. <laughs> So, for those of you that haven't seen last week's uh, yeah, uh, 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 sermon, uh, the, they, they struggled because I wasn't here trying to get everything to work. So, they did. You know, I, I, I appreciate um, Brother Greg doing that. So. I heard a couple different. Yeah, so I, that's good. All right, so here we go. So, Genesis chapter 6 is where you'll find the story of Noah, his wife, their three sons, and their wives, along with two of the animals that were called by God. Now here's here's one of those things where this is not a teaching. This is a hey, did you ever think about this? You know those evolutionists that say, well, you know, we're, you know, six billion years ago, you know, we were dragging our knuckles. No, no. God sent a flood because the earth had become corrupt. Yeah. How do we know? That's why. I'm the dinosaurs didn't die. That, how do we not know that's why the dinosaurs... You know what I'm saying? God called the animals two by two onto the ark. What if he didn't call the T-Rexes? What if he didn't call those cave-dwelling men that were evil? I'm just saying. Spiders wow. and snakes. And why did he save the spiders? Come oh, on! <laughs> and mosquitoes. I, I, I think they just hung out, you know. You know what was not on the ark? Fish of the sea. No, of course not. Just I, I, that re recently came to light about something. You know what about the sea creatures? You know, like the, the, the megalodon and, and and things like that. These giant dinosaur type fish. What happened to them? When the earth was covered with water, they swam their way up to the top of the mountains, and that's why you find the bones of them. Right. Way out of place. Yep. I'm just saying. We don't know. It's just it's one of those things I, I think of at 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. If you haven't yet, there is a replica in Kentucky that you should see. Now, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to try to schedule a ride up there next spring. Let's go. There is a full-size arc in Kentucky. I've seen the signs for it. Now, People say, it's not possible, it's not possible. You go up there and you see it, and the people that I know of that have seen it go, oh yeah, it's possible. Now, it's not made from gopher wood, but it's still the measurements that were given. Anyway, so, anyway I, I do believe it because I have faith in the, in the book that we have. Amen? Yeah. I believe it. 
Where in Kentucky is that? I, I don't know. I got the address at home. Yeah, you can find it online. It's not. Yeah. I, I know it's. I know it's more than a day ride up, a day ride back for bikers. So we'll have to stay up there somewhere. But. Hey, all right. Stay there. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I don't know how many hours it takes to go through this thing, but it's it's huge. It takes me a long time, Jack. Yeah. yeah. I know. So, I just I. I wonder if I get on there and they close that door. Does that mean? <laughs> Verse number eight. By faith, Abraham. All right, here's another one. There's that by faith again. So that was a history lesson, wasn't it? By faith, Noah built an ark. And all of his neighbors and friends were laughing at him. Building a what? They didn't sail before then. They, there was no rain was. before then. No, there was, that's the first word. A mist came up from the ground to water things that was needing water. There was no rain before the ark. So, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out. Not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise. As in a foreign land. Living in tents with Isaac and Jacob. Heirs with him to the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city or to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Now let's think about that for a minute. There's a whole lot we can say about Abraham. Well, one, that wasn't his original name. Abram. It was Abram. That's correct. And what was his wife's original name? I'm sorry, I know you're going to ask me that. <laughs> we'll go back to that later. Well, you'll see. So Abraham did step out in faith, going to the place God had promised him. And it's like saying, look, hey, Fred, you know, if, if you just take off and go to the west until I tell you to stop, I'll give you all this land. That was her last name. What was her original name? You'll get to it. So his faith was less than perfect. Uh-oh. Abraham wasn't this perfect guy that we read about? No. Not when this happened. But because of his faith, God chose him. Were any of the disciples or the characters in the Bible outstanding citizens? No. I, I don't know how to answer that question because... Luke? Luke was a doctor. That would be the closest thing to a, an upright citizen. I've been thinking about this a lot. But what about an outstanding citizen, uh, outstanding Jew, an outstanding man of God? You know, we can talk about. Um, um, oh, uh, we just talked about him a couple of weeks ago. Um, Mekeseldek was a priest that we don't know anything about beforehand. But he's attributed to the greatness of God so much so that Jesus is said to be of his kind. Not of his line, but of his kind. Okay. So you think about that may be one person, the Keselec. I don't know of anybody else. Nothing comes to mind, right? Yeah. Definitely not um, David. The murdering uh, adulteress, right? Even Noah is a drunk. Yeah. I wish I had that list in front of me now, because I can go right. I can go right through these. You know, even Moses stutters and 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 really he didn't killed, care. He was a murderer. Right. He killed a uh, right Roman, Roman soldier. Yeah. There's so a, so we qualify. It's not us that have to qualify. It's us that become qualified Through because him. of our faith. Exactly. That's the key. That's it. So, God promised Abraham, and this is seen by comparing, if you look at back at 
Genesis 12 and Acts 7, this is where it is evident that Abraham first went halfway to where God called him and only eventually obeyed. So now you think about the Jews that left Egypt. You know, let my people go, says Moses' brother, because Moses wouldn't speak in public, right? Aaron. Aaron. So we got got to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. But did they follow their instructions? Just go without looking back. And halfway there, they built idols of gold. They 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 got disgruntled. They, they said they would have been back. better off in Egypt, right? Let's, Let's go, go back. back. Let's yeah. go back. Let's go back. Be so afraid. none of the Jews that left Egypt made it to Jerusalem. That's right. No. Forty years. New generation. Forty years they wandered a route that should have taken what two weeks to to walk. Yeah, so two or three weeks to walk. <laughs> Forty years. Hey man, I've seen that rock before. Hey, I wrote my name over there on that rock. And I said, no. God blinded them to the directions. So they just wandered back and forth. Back and forth. Fed them every day. Made sure that they were healthy. Okay, and then let them die so that the next generation could enter the promised land. Interesting, isn't it? So, you can see that even though they had been selected by God, they still made make mistakes. But by faith, Abraham went. Not, or not right away, but he went. And here we are thousands of years later still talking about it. There's one other event too with Abraham. 100 years old. Oh, we're going to get to that. Because yeah. that's why I was asking if you knew her name. So here we go. Abraham lived as a sojourner in the land that God promised, never owning any of it, except the plots that he and Sarah were buried. Now, there's a Greek word there that's translated in some versions to the word dwelt. He stayed, he dwelt in this land. And that Greek word is periokios. Uh, it's describing a resident alien, one who lives in a certain place but doesn't have permanent status there. Hey, guess what? That can describe any of us today. Are we permanent fixtures here? Now, Mom's owned this house, this land, since 1950. 68 years my mother has lived here. But is she a permanent? No. No, she's going to go home and live with Jesus. Someday. Not Sunday. Some, someday. Someday. Hopefully very far in the future. So, a resident alien or sojourner is evident by the way that they talk, the way that they dress, their mannerisms, their entertainment, what they do as far as a citizenship, their friends. And they, they always speak about their native home. If someone is in the same area as, as, as this person, as these natives, they're no longer sojourners. They are permanent residents if they have been there all of their life. Christians should not live as if they were permanent residents of the planet Earth. She's still to water. It's all right. Concrete floors can't hurt. Scared me for a second. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. It's concrete floors, a little straw. Everything's fine. So here we go. So here, here's what I was thinking about. Christians shouldn't live as if they were permanent residents of the planet Earth. What is the Bible? This is one of the what's, the, what's it called when you spell out words from the each letter? It's called an acronym, is that right? Acronym? Or acrostic. And I always get this wrong. I think it's acrostic. So the word Bible, B-I-B-L-E, is the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's it. That's our manual. That's how we're supposed to live our lives. That's how we're supposed to have faith. It tells us everything in there that we need 
to know everything. Everything. Every subject that's in there. Ooh. It's amazing. It says there that they were dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob because they had no permanent home. Abraham owned no land where he went. So he lived in tents as if he were just traveling through. The city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God, is not where Abraham went. It is where Abraham is going. See, even in the Old Testament, they're looking forward to the cross and what happens afterwards. What happens in the end? You got to you got to yeah, understand. The there's a lot of things that are going to happen. A lot of things are going to happen. But Earth is going to be gone. gone, and there will be a new city of Jerusalem. John says in the Revelation that. God gave him, he sees it coming down from heaven. And that we will be inhabitants of the city with the foundation built by God. Abraham's not there yet in this story. Is he there now? Argumentative. Argumentative. But it's okay. It's okay. We're going to leave that at the door. But by faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as, in, it's as if he was a stranger in this country. The land was the land of Canaan that had been promised to him and his posterity. He resided there as if he were a stranger and a sojourner. Like I said, he had no possessions there which he did not procure by honest purchase. He owned no land in, except a small piece of they were bought for the burial of him, him and Sarah. Now, they said he, the Bible says he worked the day and worshipped at night. So, that day job bought him whatever they used as a place to bury them. That's the only thing he ever bought. That's, you can find all that in Genesis 23. In all respects, he lived there as if he had no special rights to the soil. Ooh. You go back and you think about last week, we talked about Cain and Abel. Cain was the one that tilled the ground. Abel was the one that brought the tent of the flocks, right? So if you go back to Adam and Eve, when they... Um, ate of the forbidden fruit, God told them you will till the ground as part of your punishment. They didn't have to before then. Nope. So here is Cain that was the one that tilled the ground, and now they're saying Abram tilled the ground. Interesting. Or, it, it, how did I just say that? He said he had no right to the soil, he, he, uh, as if never expecting to own it as if they were in a country wholly owned by others. He exercised no privileges which might not have been exercised by any foreigner and which was not regarded as a right of the common. Does that not ring out as something that should be thought of today? I'll just leave it at that. That of feeding his cattle in any unoccupied part of the land, he would have had no power of ejecting any other persons except what anyone might have enjoyed by the pre-occupancy of the pasture grounds. He can't make people leave the land. He can't. But if his animals are grazing there, he's might, he might say, hey, look, my animals are already grazing here. <coughs> Pardon me, excuse me, move over a little bit, that kind of thing. That's, that's the way I take that. To all intents and purposes, he was a stranger, yet he seems to have lived in the confident and quiet expectation that the land would at some period come into the possession of his descendants, his prosperity. And in verse 10 of that, it says he was looking for a city built by God. 
And in Revelation 21, 2, John says that he saw the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down. I've told you about that from God out of heaven. And it proceeds in that chapter, and the following gives the most beautiful description of it. Even, even at so early as the time of Abraham, it would seem that the future blessedness of the righteous was foretold under the image of of a splendid city to come on permanent foundations. Wow. And what a great and glorious day that will be. Amen? It is remarkable that Moses did not even mention this as an objective of the faith of Abraham. And it is impossible to ascertain the degree of distinctness which had its, in his view. In other words, even by tradition, they talk about him as being so great, but here he is living as if he were just common folk. He was accustomed, in common with others of his time, to contemplate the future blessedness of the righteousness under the image of the beautiful city to come, a place where the worship of God would be celebrated forever, a city of which Jerusalem was the most striking representation to the mind of a Jew. And it was natural for him to speak of a pretty strong piety in the manner wherever it existed, and especially in such a case as that of Abraham. So the writer is trying to pour this knowledge into whoever he's expecting it to read it. Look, this is history. Abraham knew that he would get into this city even though he made mistakes. So I wonder how, how did he find the city where he went to and slept, slept in tents? Was it just a place he was passing through? That's the way he lived. But I wonder more, is he currently in that great city? <clears throat> or if that comes later? I don't know. I don't know. Verse 11. I said verse 11. Stay. Good. All right. By faith. There's those two words again. How do we know where we stand in God? By faith. How do we know that God's promises are real? By faith. So by faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive even when she was past the age since, since she considered Him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars in heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. I'm glad I got that out because I was thinking, you know, he sells she shells by she I can't do that. I can't. So here we go. By faith, Sarah. And I asked you a minute ago, what was her original name? Because it wasn't Sarah. God told Sarai, Sarai, you shall have a child. And she went, yeah, right. Almost 100 years old. Yeah, she's 90, over 90 years old. 93. And the old, the old man's like 100. He's 100. Yeah, yeah right. Well, we're going to adopt. Are we going down to the center and adopt a couple of babies? Is that what you're talking about, God? No. By faith. Did it happen right away? No. Why? He got the vision... Uh, and he struggled with it for a long time. And I, I, I believe in my heart that that's what kept driving him. Yep. He just believed. He had the faith. But he who promised mm -hmm. Sarah mm -hmm. is infallible. And they tried it the other way. Yeah. They tried themselves to, to have... Uh, yeah. And that's a whole other mess to get into. But Sarah 
gave birth to many nations. Ooh. As many as the stars in heaven and as innumerable as the grains of sand in the ocean. Wow. By faith. And imagine he's getting older and older and older. He's had this vision. You know, it's got to play on you. It does. I mean, he didn't have any supernatural power except for what was in him, his faith in him. Right? The faith in you, right. And it, 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 we go through it too. We go through it too. The longer we, if we get a vision or a dream and God gives us something and, and we really believe that that's what we were called to do, but it hasn't manifested yet, you tend to start to get weary. Yeah. You know? And he didn't. She did. By faith, Sarah. Now see, Sarah's faith was not perfect either. No, she's Can you imagine in you know in the number of years that her and Abraham were together, the names that she called him? Can you imagine how depressed that she got? Yeah. Because God said you're going to have children as innumerable as the stars, and she went, oh, I ain't had one yet. And you're getting older and older. Right. And all this is right. Coming on. She first laughed in unbelief. Now that's in Genesis 18. Yeah. And then she learned to laugh in faith. That's Genesis 21 6. She got to thinking, hey, I believe this God. I, I believe that. What he says is true. And because she judged him faithful, who had promised her this, God is faithful and he keeps his promises. It was this faith that enabled Sarah to restrive, restrive, receive strength to conceive. We're born as many as the stars in the multitude. Because of the faith of Sarah and Abraham, thousands, millions of descendants mm -hmm. are theirs. Okay, now, I, I'm going to take a giant leap here, okay? Listen to this. It is estimated somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 6 million Jews were exterminated in World War II, right? Guess what? Every single one of those, six million, were descendants of Abraham. Did you hear what I said? Every single one of those were descendants of Abraham. He's a busy man. Sarah received this promise, that the promise of God, and being convinced of that, she truly judged that he could both would could and would perform it. Many who have a part in the promises do not soon receive the things promised. Faith can lay hold of blessings at a great distance and can make them present, can love them and rejoice in them, though strangers as saints whose home is in heaven, as pilgrims traveling toward their home. All true believers desire that heavenly inheritance. What is our heavenly inheritance? It's the relationship with Jesus. The relationship with Jesus, the relationship with God, sure. But let's go a little bit further. We talked about this about a month ago. We said that the inheritance that was promised to us was the universe that God created. Now, some, some, I hate to call them religions. Some people think that means that we each get our own planet. No. No. The, the universe is sitting there in awe waiting for us. But we will be with God in the holy city. The writer then goes on into others that we'll talk about starting next week as righteous. And like I said, we'll get into that next week. But for now, I, I want you to consider this one thing. How, how is your faith holding up? Do you have faith 
in the one who promised eternity or are you wandering through the desert? Nowhere in the Bible does it say life is going to be easy. And for those that preach that, they're liars. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you're going to be wealthy. That is not in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that life's going to be easy street once you accept Christ. No. Christ Himself says just the opposite. You will have trials and tribulations. You will be hated by the earth because they hated me first. So don't get discouraged. Don't lose your faith when things don't go as you think they should. No, by faith, they're going the way God wants them. And how do we grow our faith? By the Word of God, hearing the Word of God, right? And being around people with like minds. Yep. And exactly right. And it's so important. So important. That's why I do what I do. We stay connected yep. together to build each other up. To keep going up that, that step of life, that ladder of life. Just keep on moving up and believing in Him. Yep. Absolutely. So let me ask you this question now. How's your faith holding up? Will you or have you used the faith to go out on the limb, not for yourself, but for him. Now I know the answer, you know, from several of you, but I want you to answer to yourself. Have you given up on what you thought was important and focused then on what he says is important for you? I struggle with this daily because I'm still my, working on it. Yeah. I struggle with it daily not because of my faith, because my faith is he is in him who has promised. And his word is his bond. He can't lie. I have problems. I get those desperate feelings of inadequacy. God says, sit up there and teach my word. I do. Because he tells me to. And every Thursday morning I go, I don't know if I can do this tonight. And I, I, I start to write, Brother Will, can you do this tonight? No. I can't do that. I, I, I have to get outside of myself and say, God, give me the strength to do what you've asked me to do. This ministry that my father so graciously allowed me to work with, um, it gets tested like that all the time, walking up to a complete stranger and laying hands on him and commanding the pain to go. Sometimes it gets real hard to do especially when I'm by myself, but I still do it. Um, I'm never going to stop doing it. And this, this is not for anybody here. This is for the sake of just leaving me alone because you ain't going to win. But it just, it, it, it sometimes, just like what you said, we put the word together and come out here and, and, and but it's your calling. Right. And this, my call, this is our call, this is what we're supposed to be doing, all of us, we all have a calling that we're supposed to be doing to grow the kingdom. By the different gifts that were given to us by the, by the Spirit. But it really gets tough. Yeah. It really gets tough. Yeah. I was reading in 1 Corinthians 12 just today, you know, because I, I get confused sometimes. Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Because that's not what God called me to do. I can't force myself to do these things. I can only do what God called me to do. I am a discerner of the Word of God, and I teach His Word. I'm able to speak. I'm able to do techie stuff. And I'm an okay musician. I can't sing, but I'm an okay musician. I, I would love to be able to do more, but that's not what He wants me to do. I can't force that upon myself. So, can you get change? That depends on the Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with us. It has only to do with the Holy Spirit. Right. So it can change if He changes it. If He changes it, yeah. But I can't force it to happen. No. All right. 
Questions? Comments? You guys like that? <laughs> I don't know what that was, but okay. Well, listen, at this point, we're going to go ahead and turn off the camera. Thanks for showing up and watching tonight. Please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and you know what to do. But listen, if nothing else, believe in He that is greater in you than He that is in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, see you guys next week.